Today I have the distinct pleasure of standing here with the new Reverend Maisha Osborne of the Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church. And what a pleasure to have you here on our show. Thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you for coming. So what brought you to this church? So by the anointing of God passed through that of our bishop, I was appointed here in Pentecost Sunday to start being the shepherd of the beautiful people here at Bethel Amy Centerville. And how's it been going? Oh, it's been spectacular. <laughs> it's been great. I really can say that every Sunday we have been going higher and higher in that of Christ. It literally feels like Christmas morning when I come in here. I tell them, you have a pastor now that has no problem coming to church and have no problem staying. So what's it like for the church and for you? I mean, I, I, my understanding every year, maybe there could be a change, maybe there's not, but you're new here. Yeah. What's it like for the church to have a new reverend come in? So according to um, us as humans, change is a hard thing to have, right? Oh yeah. And then <laughs> when you receive a new pastor, you just pray in the name of Jesus that the anointing of the call is not stale, but is on fire. And so it's, there is a bit of transition, but when the move of God comes in, I tell you what, all that goes out the door yeah. and we just want to make sure to have God in the forefront and of course, Christ in the forefront of it all. Right. Now, can we get to know you a little bit more? Sure. Where are you from? I am originally from, here it is, Long Branch, New Jersey. Oh. Yes. And I met my dear, sweet, lovingly husband, the first gentleman, mind you, <laughs> met him here in Maryland. Great. And you have a family? Yes, so we have two daughters. Get this, one is 23 and one just turned three. Wow, took a little break. Uh, took, took a little break. <laughs> what, what's it like to restart that process? Well, ask my later? husband. <laughs> no, don't, please don't ask him. Please don't ask yeah, him. He's not gonna don't get this ask piece. him, love you dear. <laughs> so to restart that whole process, guess what? It's just in a new season and God saw fit to bless us with another little one, amen, that keeps us busy. And with that being said, there's just some things that we got to do. Realize mm -hmm. we can't do what we used to do, but we can do what we can do with while we're living. <laughs> now, do they all make the trip with you? Oh, yes. Yeah. When one go, we all fly here. <laughs> Amen. But it's a wonderful journey to come across here on the Eastern Shore and then to, of course, greet the wonderful people of God and then receive radical love. That's, a number, that's the number one thing. My husband always says, what keeps me in the church is the love of the people. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, ever since we got here, it's just been love, radical love. And I'm not, and I'm not just saying that because I'm the pastor, anyway. <laughs> but I'm saying it because it's true. Love covers a multitude. And it goes a long way. When you get that from the soon as you get the door, you get that smile. Then you get to get into the seat and guess what? The worship service is pretty good. I heard the pastor can preach. That's the word on the street. The word on the street <laughs> is that the pastor got the anointing and honey, she can preach. Amen. She can preach. But then even after that, it's not just the pastor that doesn't want to leave, but the people. Right. The people have no problem commingling in Jesus over here just to have conversation. And we make sure that love is shared. Love is seen and yeah. felt. Hugging and greeting and shaking hands. I know COVID exists, but ain't nobody coming up in here if they know they're sick. And when you're up in here, why not go on ahead and have a good time in the Lord? Yeah. Yeah. And it might even be a good time. Maybe people are watching this. They're like, I didn't even know this church was here. And now there's a new reverend here. Maybe it's time to visit, huh? It's time to visit. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Well. It's time to visit. What are you doing? Come on <laughs> over here. Sundays, 11 a.m. Make sure you coming up over here at 104 Washington Road, Centerville, Maryland, where I heard the preacher can preach. <laughs> but more than that, the people love each other. And guess what? We'll love you too. I, I can make this promise right now for anyone that visits. The energy is amazing. Yes, it is. Because <laughs> God is good. Yes. God is wonderful. So you get to visit here now, but you're new to Centerville area, right? I am. So what do you think so far? So far, so great. Yeah. It's so quiet, so mm -hmm. peaceful, so wonderful, but I'm definitely ready to go on and break the news of the Lord all up in the community. That's right. Let's shake it so, up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In which I'm thankful that the congregation has no problem welcoming me and mm -hmm. our family in, but then also, also making sure to get me where I need to in order to meet the people. See, that's another thing. We have no problem going outside of here, going into the community, being seen, and then also administering ministry to the folk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I may ask, what started your journey? 
Oh my Lord, what started me? How about running? Running, running, running. And then finally say, I yield, I yield, Lord. In other words, realizing that I'm imperfect. Mm -hmm. But God doesn't want us to be imperfect. God wants us to be saved. And with being saved, realizing that God went through all of this through that of his son Jesus for me, mm -hmm. why not? Yeah. Right? Yes. Now I will say, when I was younger, I didn't say, oh, I want to be a minister. No, that didn't happen. Right. But what had happened was just me finding the love of Jesus for me. And why not? If mm -hmm. Jesus can love me, I'm sure there's plenty of others out there that need to know Jesus loves you too. And why not hear from an imperfect being such as me? And now that you're here, I think it's a great time, like we said, to visit. So let's bring them all down. Oh, a note from my camera. You're the first appointed female pastor here? Ah! You didn't tell me this? This is big news. Uh, it is big news. It's huge. And they have their first, first gentleman. Oh, we're rocking it over here. Yeah. So what's that like for, for you as a, as a powerful woman to be here and just being able to preach as a woman for the first time in the church? So to tell you the honest truth, I'm very humbled. Very humbled at it, um, to take it in that God truly sees me fit to, get, to entrust me with God's precious treasure. Uh -huh. And that's us. And each time I'm just like, God, just use me in order to do your perfect will to edify your people. Um, I don't get lost in titles and stuff like that, uh, but I am appreciative of it, but I try to remain humble of it because there's a lot of work to be done because I remember all the work that it took me to get here. Yeah. So guess what? Um, just as the first female, I just, female pastor here. I know there's a lot of footprints that have made this journey thus far for Bethel to get here, right? Yeah. And only pray in the name of Jesus that I'm able to fill them, but then also leave a few behind. Yeah. So you're, you're shaking things up here, but maybe <laughs> we don't shake them up too long. Maybe you want to stay for a while if possible. I do. Yeah. I do. I do. I so do. And I hope and pray while I'm here that you come and see us too. Yeah. I think it's time. We, we, it was such an honor to meet you. I had a great here. time visiting. Thank you so much. Oh, of course. And now it's time for everyone else to come out and meet Reverend Maisha Osborne. Come on, come on, come Have on. a great time. Come on. Yeah. Have a great time. And let's praise the Lord together. I'm sure, I'm sure you definitely will not leave here the same way you came. In Jesus' name, amen. That's how I feel right now. <laughs> <laughs>